We turn to page 219 for the order of matins. Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 29, which you can find in the front part of your hymnal. Remember, there are no page numbers. The psalms are simply in numerical order. And we will read Psalm 29 responsively half verse by half verse. That means I read up to the red asterisk, and you respond with the rest of the verse. We read responsibly Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. May the Lord give strength to his people. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I now invite any children forward for a special message. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Oh, it's good to see each of you here this morning. Have you ever been proud of something? Right? Happy that you got something accomplished or, or pretty impressed with what you were able to do. Maybe you made something or you put together a puzzle or you did well on a test. Come on up, friend. Come on up. Have you ever been well pleased with something? Really, really happy. Well, in our gospel reading for today, the Heavenly Father says in the baptism of Jesus that he is well pleased with Jesus. Jesus is the perfect Son of God who came to die on the cross for us. And that ministry began with his baptism. God was well pleased with Jesus because he was his perfect Son. He listened to him. He obeyed him. He laid down his life. God was well pleased with Jesus. But at times, God is not well pleased with you and me. We lose pieces. We break things we build. We start things and don't finish them. And we aren't always proud of the choices we made. Yet God still loves you. This is why he sent Jesus. For you. So that he would forgive you. Give you another chance. So that God would be well pleased with you. Too. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for sending Jesus for us. Thank you for helping him to take our place, beginning at the baptism and then on the cross, so that we can find true forgiveness, and yet you can be well pleased with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks everyone. You can return to your seats, or you can follow Mr. Selmeyer to Kids Church. We continue our worship by singing our next hymn, 405, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord.
Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 9, on page 766 in your pew Bibles. And our Old Testament reading is known as the first servant song of Isaiah. God tells us that a new thing is coming. It's coming in his servant, in his chosen one, in whom he delights. Isaiah proclaims, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon and the prison, those who sit in darkness." I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle reading comes to us from Romans, the sixth chapter, the first 11 verses, on page 1207. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that we are not to continue sinning. Rather, we are a new creation in our baptism. We died with Christ, and in baptism we were raised with Christ to a new life. We are dead to sin and alive to God. Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the Gospel reading. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17, found on page 1033. And this reading is the baptism of Jesus. Notice closely to what happens at the end when the Spirit descends upon Jesus and the voice of the Father cries out. We read. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. O Lord, have mercy on us. We continue with the common responsory on page 221 in our hymnal. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Bless 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's time to do something new. Has that ever been spoken at your home or at work? It's time to do something new. It's probably meant to sound positive on something that's not going so well. Usually it's time to do something new because something isn't working. The model is broken. The plan is falling apart. It's time for something new. Well, in our Old Testament reading, God declares something similar. In the final verse of our text from Isaiah 42, God says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God says clearly in our text, it's time to do something new. Which might sound a little strange in our ears because God is perfect. His good and gracious will is always done. And yet God says it's time for something new. But it has to do with this servant. One of my favorite parts of the Old Testament comes in the book of Isaiah in what experts call the servant songs of Isaiah. Now our text from Isaiah 42 is the first of what they call four servant songs in the book of Isaiah. And right off the bat with this first song, God comes out and he says, Behold, I'm doing something new. But why would God want to do something new? Let's start with how Isaiah 41 ends. In Isaiah 41, verse 24, it says, Behold, you are nothing, and your work is less than nothing. An abomination is he who chooses you. Then again, in the last verse of Isaiah 41, Behold, they are all a delusion. Their works are nothing. Their metal images are empty wind. These harsh words are about idols, worthless idols. But the shocking part is that God's chosen people, who was supposed to be his chosen servant Israel, they were now dependent on idols. They trusted in metal figurines and, and statues made by human hands more than they trusted in the Lord. Yahweh, who had redeemed them, who had brought them out of Egypt, gave them the promised land, provided for them during the period of the judges, gave them kings when they foolishly asked of them, and on and on God's grace and mercy ex was extended to them. And in return, they trusted in worthless, foolish idols. They prayed to made-up gods. They trusted in sorcerers and horoscopes. They looked to luck and the stars to tell them what to do or not do. They trusted in the works of their hands over and against the works of God. As almost as if everything made by human hands was something. When Isaiah tells them clearly, they're nothing. In fact, Isaiah says, they're less than nothing. These idols are empty winds. And that's a struggle that's still today. Oh, sure, we don't, we don't have statues and shrines in our homes anymore. We've evolved, sort of. Instead, we worship the idol of money, which is still made by human hands. We answer the siren call of money so much so that jobs trump spiritual life. And then we turn to luck. 
Many will flock to the cash registers in the next couple of days to hope to win another major lottery cash payout. And I don't need God when I've got my lucky numbers. Yet many people would rather trust in the luck, a luck that is lower than actually getting struck by lightning, than the 100% chance that you will meet God and his judgment at the end. We now live in an age where people really turn to horoscopes and astrological signs more than the true word of God. Because we have so little control over what happens next, people flock to anything that promises them to tell them their future. Psychics, mediums, manifesting, and others will claim they can tell you what happens next. Which is more important than trusting that whatever happens next is in God's hands. People, even Christians, are more willing to talk about a cardinal flying by must be a deceased loved one more than trusting that God has that loved one in his care in heaven. People would rather think that their loved ones are watching over them rather than think that God is watching over them. People would rather put their trust in angels, God's servants, than put their trust in the God of all power and might. And it's easy to look at our Old Testament readings and say, oh, what foolish people, and miss the point. We aren't any better. We just change who our idols are. Our idols today are family, happiness, sex, money, celebrities, athletes, health, fame, fortune, politics, science, homes, identities, and so much more. Oftentimes we try to fit God into the gaps of what those things can't cover. But then as we add to more of our idol worship, then we squeeze God out of those gaps more and more. Yet when we get to that future end, your end in this world, which of those things will matter? What will they do for you? What can they help you out with? Family, happiness, sex, money, celebrities, athletes, health, fame, fortune, politics, science, homes, identities, they will all come up empty. They can't do anything to stop or change what the future holds for you. And that's why God says, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. God doesn't share his glory with these things because they aren't him, they're worthless. They're an empty wind, they are nothing. And this is why God says he is doing a new thing. And the new thing is this servant. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. Although God had called Israel to be his chosen servant, Israel had failed over and over again. So this servant would be something new, someone new, someone almost unthinkable. Now, in our readings this morning, did you catch that connection between our Old Testament reading and the baptism of Jesus? Right, again, behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. And at the end of the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descends on him like a dove. And the Father's voice cries out, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. In other words, the baptism of Jesus, the new thing God had promised, is starting. The one that will bring justice, heal the blind, open the ears of the deaf, call out the prisoners stuck in darkness. The new thing God promised is here. It's Jesus, God's beloved Son, is his servant. And here's the amazing thing. He joins us in our misery. And maybe I should say he joins us in our idol worship. Now, not in the way that you think that line might sound like, but he joins us in our sinfulness. One of the mysteries of understanding the servant songs of Isaiah is what Isaiah says about this servant between this first servant song and the second one in Isaiah 49. He portrays Israel as God's servant, but that Israel is unfaithful. For example, he says a little later in Isaiah 42, Hear you deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, 
or death as my messenger whom I send. These are not flattering words about the supposed servant to the Lord. It's puzzled some experts how this could be. Well, I don't want to... I've already put you guys to sleep enough. And I don't want to put you to sleep with more technical and fancy words to describe what's going on. I would rather use the baptism of Jesus to get us to grasp what's happening. Because many people have asked, why is Jesus baptized by John in the Jordan River? Because it's clear that John has a message of repentance, and this baptism was a baptism of repentance, not the same as Christian baptism. But what's the Lord's servant doing there? What is the perfect Son of God with whom the Father is well pleased? What's he doing in a baptism for sinners? He came to join us in the muck and mire of this life. He didn't worship idols, but he became the greatest idol worshiper of all time. He begins his ministry with this important act to join himself to us sinners, to be the servant that you need, someone who has come to take away your guilt, your sins, your idol worship. He has come to bear all the manifestations, the love of money, the priority of family, the extreme need of happiness, the turning to politics, science, and other things that try to promise a better life and a better future, but can't. Jesus, the servant of God, came to take the place of Israel and all sinners. When God announced who Jesus is, it was as if he was saying, the new time is here. Look at Jesus. He is my faithful servant who has come to do something new. He came to take the place of the unfaithful servant and become the perfect faithful servant. And he came to take the place of you in God's demanding judgment. And that's what he did on the cross. On the cross, God does something new. He shined a light into your dark hearts. He opened your eyes to the truth. He unstopped your ears so you could truly hear his word of love and peace. In the cross of Jesus, we see that God will not break a bruised reed or quench a faintly burning wick. Because Jesus was crushed for our iniquities, he was quenched for our mistakes. It's already been done, and in Jesus, it's all been forgiven. Also, that there's only one thing left, one thing to truly look forward to and trust, one thing left to still by your side and taking you by the hand. And that one thing left says, I am the Lord, this is my name. My glory I give to no other. You give glory to God. Because no idol would give up what the chosen servant gave up for you. This is a glorious new day and a future that is sure waiting for you because of this precious servant. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now continue our worship by singing our next hymn, 601, All Who Believe and Are Baptized.
We turn to the back cover of our hymnal for the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to hymn 941. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God.
Please be seated for our offering. We continue our worship on page 227 with the order of the order of prayer, beginning with the Kyrie. In our prayers this morning, remember those listening to our bulletin. We also pray for Larry Kelly's family at the death of his aunt. Please stand as we continue with the Kyrie. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Heavenly Father, your Son fulfilled all righteousness and submitted to baptism with sinners in the Jordan. Well pleased you opened the heavens for us and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. As you have joined us to Christ's death and resurrection by holy baptism given us spirit, strengthen our hearts and open our ears to hear your holy word. And rejoice that you have made us your beloved children in him. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, as you have opened heaven to your church through holy baptism, Give her faithful teachers to proclaim your Son, Jesus Christ, and all that accords with godliness, that many would repent of their sins and join him in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the gift of family. Bless all parents, especially mothers, that they would joyfully acknowledge your gift of spouse, children, and home. Be near to the elderly, the widowed, and the orphan. Show forth your grace to them that they would not feel alone. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Son, Jesus, is the Christ and the true King of this world. Grant great humility to the rulers of this nation, including Joseph, our President, that they would submit to the preaching of his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of your holy people. Lord, in your mercy. O God, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, have compassion on your creation. Deliver from danger all who are threatened by natural disaster, dangerous weather, pestilence, flood, or famine. Provide all that is needed for the body and life. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you sent your Son as the servant who would preserve the bruised reed and the faintly burning wick. Help us on behalf of those in need of healing and deliverance, including Jeff, Carol, Leroy, Tim, David, Jerry, Helen, Carol, Lynn, Helen, Sherry, Harold, Elmer, Rich, Linda, Shirley, Bridge, Claudia, and Iwona. Provide healing, 
restoration and justice according to your good and gracious will, and grant that we would always rejoice in your Son's everlasting faithfulness toward us. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you continue to teach us through the word of God the truths of salvation of your world. Help Trinity Lutheran School to teach these truths to our children so they may walk in the ways of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. O God, in baptism we were buried with Christ into death and raised with him to walk in newness of life. Give us repentant hearts to continue to live as your children who have had their sins forgiven. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, in your servant Jesus, you have conquered death for us. Bring that comfort to Larry and his family at the death of his aunt. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings be ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, 412, The People That in Darkness Sat. Please be seated. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's words, reminded that this new servant, Jesus, came to serve you by taking your place on the cross. A couple of announcements. One, it's birthday Sunday. So who here 
has a birthday in January. Stand up nice and tall. All right, now we're going to sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everyone. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. May God bless you and keep you another year Well, happy birthday to all of you in January. And there are birthday treats at the bottom of the steps for everyone to enjoy. Um, also, if you have not taken your point set at home and want to take it home, please feel free to take it home today. Um, and there's plenty for you to choose from. And then uh, also, um, we have our new member class starting tonight at 6 o'clock. So if you'd like to join us for that, that would be greatly appreciated. All materials are provided for you. Any other announcements? None? Then let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. God's blessings to you this week.